Nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. The Kybalion. It's no news that everything in the universe has a vibration. Physical matter, like rocks, are of a denser vibration. Non-physical matter, like electromagnetic waves, are of a subtler vibration. The real question is, can these subtler, finer vibrations have an effect on the denser vibrations? Can waves affect dense physical objects like rocks? The answer to this question is the source of some of the greatest mysteries in modern science. And the short answer is yes, definitely. But what does this mean? The true implications of this lies in understanding the human mind and consciousness itself. See, our thoughts and feelings themselves are vibrations, but the real question is, do our thoughts and feelings affect the dense material reality that we experience? In today's video, I'm going to share with you not only how your thoughts and feelings shift your reality, but a method via which you can use your thoughts and feelings to consciously manifest the specific reality that you want. Let's get started. So the very first thing that we need to understand are two control mechanisms that we all possess. Attention and intention, which determines the frequency or the vibration of the particular sector of reality that we're tapping into. So what I mean by that is the following. If you imagine railroad tracks and a train on railroad tracks, your attention, what? you focus on shifts the railroad tracks in a particular direction towards a particular sector of reality. So it makes a potential reality manifest. So whatever you focus on, your attention is on, makes a potential reality become a potential in the first place, okay? So if you imagine that we're in a space of multiple parallel realities that can be manifested, the sector of reality that you are moving towards right now, or you are in right now, the lifeline that you are in right now, where you becoming a millionaire is a possibility, you having financial freedom and hanging out with your family all day long and doing what you love every single day is a possibility. That is manifested by what your attention is on, which I'm going to show you how to control later on. Intention is what causes movement within that lifeline. So if we go back to the railroad track analogy, the train is moved by intention. So I'm going to describe to you what intention is and we're going to dive deeper into attention and intention. So please make sure you pay close attention to this once this makes sense. You're going to be seamlessly shifting between realities but also you're going to start to see a lot of synchronicities happen in your life. I just got off a call with a client who was telling me how he completely surrendered and all of a sudden opportunities started to show up and I can't tell you the number of times I've seen that and that's because when you surrender you tap into that vibration, that frequency, there is no resistance to it. You're no longer getting in the way of you experiencing the thing that was meant for you in the first place. So all of these opportunities started to work out for him, all the investment opportunities, and it's leading him to the lifeline that he wanted to get to. So going back to attention and intention, we discussed how that potential reality, the sector of reality, the lifeline that we are tapped into is determined via our attention. The quality of attention is such that wherever our attention goes, energy flows. What you focus on grows, okay? So let's talk about what most people focus on. And this is very, very important because chances are you're unconsciously doing this. So you're unconsciously manifesting a sector of reality. You are materializing a sector of reality that is unwanted. So most people focus on what they don't want and what they don't have. So for example, most people focus on this. They say, I don't have money to do this. I don't have the time to do this. When they think of new opportunities and things that they would like to do. And then they say, I don't want more bills to pile up. I'm drowning in debt. Or they say, I don't want my husband or my wife to leave me. I don't want my business to fail. I don't want my children to go through this. I don't want that to happen. Or they say, oh, I don't have that right now. So they're focusing on, I don't have, I don't want this to happen. Any time in your life you're experiencing something that you don't like, it's because you're focusing on something that you don't want. It's as simple as that. When you focus on the unwanted, you, get, you experience more of the unwanted. Whatever you focus on, you get more of. This is the quality of attention. So when I focus on, I don't want my business to fail, or I don't want to be drowning in debt, I am manifesting a sector of reality, that parallel reality space, the sector where I am drowning in debt. You know what's so interesting about this? There's a show on Apple TV called Dark Matter. Many of you have probably watched this, but that show literally 
boggled my mind at how accurate it was because I've been talking about this for the last five years. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but this is something we've been talking about on this channel for the last five years, and now all of a sudden there's a TV show showing how they're shifting between different parallel realities, but when the guy, the person, enters the box and gets into that state of superposition, he experiences, and whenever he opens the door, he experiences the reality that he's been thinking and feeling strongly about. When he's very, very thirsty and he opens the door, he opens to a parallel reality where it's a desert and there's no water anywhere in sight. When he feels cold and he feels like he's freezing, he opens it and he enters, you know, the Arctic tundra. So it, it's very interesting because that's how our thoughts and feelings work in manifesting the particular sector of reality, albeit not as quickly. There's a delay factor to manifesting the sector of reality. Guys, if you understand this, like if you simply just understand the subtlety of these thought vibrations that most people never think about. Most people always think about, oh, what can I do to get the result that I want? Just go out and take massive action. Or they wallow in self-pity. They think it doesn't matter what they think or what they feel. They can just do, go out and do the thing that they want. To a certain extent, it's true. You don't, like, it, it doesn't need to matter. But the reality is if you want to settle for an existence where you're fighting every single day, you're battling against an invisible force and you are miserable, you are utterly miserable, then that's great. You can just not care about how you feel, you can ruin your health, you can burn yourself down to the ground, binge eat, drink alcohol, smoke, and just do the, the, the worst of the vices that you can and try to get away with it. And just, you know, as long as I'm doing what I wanna do to get what I want, what's the point? Why not enjoy the journey while you get there? Why not have your cake and eat it too? I believe that no one on this planet should ever settle for anything less the ultimate. Once you understand this, you learn to have your cake and eat it too. You learn to go towards your goal whilst enjoying your journey. And it makes it so much more fun. It makes it so much more fun. Okay? So most people, what they do is they focus on what they don't want and what they don't have. What would happen if I flip this to focusing on what I do want and what I do have? So instead of focusing on the money you don't have to do X, Y, and Z, what you must do is immediately change this dialogue to, I'm grateful for the money that I already have. So for example, when you're presented with an opportunity that you can't quite take advantage of right now because of a limited amount of funds, instead of saying, oh, I don't have the money to do this, ask instead, how can I get enough money to do this? How can I raise enough money to do this? I have a client who's doing that right now. They are signing up for a $20,000 sales boot camp, and they could only afford 2,000 of the 20,000, and so now they're thinking, how can I do that? How can I raise the money to do that? Which is a more empowering question to ask rather than saying, oh, I can't do this, so I'm just gonna wallow in self-pity and just be stuck where I am right now. Instead, ask, how can I do it? Or feel grateful for all the money that you have. Oh, I'm so grateful that I can already have, that I already do have the 2000 to put down for this. When you focus on what you do have and what you do want, you get more of that. You, un you shift to that parallel reality. Your thought and feeling vibrations correspond to that particular sector of reality where that can be a possibility. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying this right now and you'd like to see more of this, we have our exclusive email list where I can share stuff that I can't really share on the channel. Just a quick plug-in for that. You can click right here, some little I, or go to realitycreator.com slash list to be able to access that. And uh, I can share stuff with you, exclusive bonuses that I can't share on YouTube because of YouTube's platform limitations and some thoughts that I have every single week um, I always send two to three emails every week. So uh, a lot of our exclusive email list members are getting a lot of benefit from it. So uh, if you'd like to access that, the link for that is gonna be on the screen. Let's get back to our regular programming. So when we focus on what we do have and what we do want, we get more of that. We unlock that sector of reality. Now, the question is what determines the total energy? How quickly that happens? The total energy of attracting that particular reality into reality right now is determined by the frequency of the thought, aka is it grounded in gratitude or is it grounded in fear? Typically, there are two emotions that we jump from, two ends of the pole, fear and love. You're either in fear or you're in love. When you feel the feeling of gratitude, you can't feel fear at the same time. You can't be fearful and grateful at the same time. It overpowers it. So your mission is to retrain yourself to consciously feel the feelings of gratitude and of love, okay? So frequency multiplied by intensity of the thought. So I want you to consider this. If I hate something with all my heart and my hate is stronger than my love for what I want, what do you think is gonna happen? Am I gonna move more towards the thing that I hate 
or more towards the thing that I love. If the intensity of my hate is stronger than the intensity of my love, I move towards the thing that I hate. And this is the unfortunate reality for 99% of people right now. They hate stronger than they love. Okay, so they look at the things, their current situation, and they hate it so much. I hate drowning in debt. I hate being stuck in this situation. I hate this miserable corporate job that I'm a part of, and I hate showing up to this job and working 60 to 80 hour weeks. I don't have time for anything. I would love to start a business, but I hate this so much more. That's the dialogue. The intensity of the hatred is stronger than the intensity of the love that they feel. If the intensity of the hatred were less, less intense than the total energy of that particular fearful scenario would be lower. So what we want to do is feel intensely, intensely, intensely grateful with no bounds. Okay. Feel so, so, so grateful for what you have. Feel so grateful for all the beautiful things you have. And everyone has something to feel grateful about. Even if you're working an 80 hour work week job, you could be in a much worse situation. You could be like in a country where, you know, there's no water. You could be almost dead. You're alive. You're here. Feel intensely. Train yourself. Just focus on that. Just redirect your mind to that. Okay? Redirect your mind to focusing on that every time you find yourself focusing on what you don't have and what you don't want. So, what's the key that you can take away from this? The one thing that I always ask myself, what am I focusing on that I don't have? Or what am I focusing on that I something that I don't want. Get clear on that and immediately catch yourself and redirect that focus to, okay, I don't want this to happen to me. I don't have that. What do I want instead? Well, instead of drowning in debt, I would love to be debt free. See, that's a different kind of thought. Ah, I imagine being debt free and having a surplus of cash. Oh, instead of you know, fighting with my husband or my wife, I imagine having a happy, healthy relationship. Oh, that's so wonderful. Give yourself permission to dream like that, to flip the script, to be that optimist. Instead of looking at the glass as half empty, look at the glass as half full, okay? When you feel anxious because you're focusing on something that you don't want or you don't have. When you feel fearful, you're focusing on something you don't want and something you don't have. Your mission moving forward is to simply redirect that focus. That's a trigger for you, okay? That should trigger you to take a step back. This is what's happening. This is what I'm, what I'm focused on. What do I want instead? What do I want to focus on instead? Ah, okay, that's it. Focus on that. Feel good for that right now. So the key takeaway from attention is your thought and feelings have a unique combination, a unique vibration. When you can direct that, your attention, to the reality you'd like to experience, then you get more of that. Okay, so some of you at this point might be thinking, if I get more of what I hate, shouldn't I start to hate money? And wouldn't I get a ton of money if I actually hate money? If your hatred toward money were genuine, that's probably what would happen. But typically most people hate something. It's not a genuine hate. It's a hate because you can't get it. I used to hate money and rich people because I thought they were evil. And I also, it kept me in in, in a safe shell. Right? It kept me protected from having to take risks to earn more money. Oh, you know, I'll just be happy with life. It's because I'd never experienced money and I'd never like wanted to experience money because I was afraid. I was afraid to put myself out there and fail. Because the moment I realized, uh oh, my life is my responsibility. I don't get rich because I was born into wealth or because, you know, I know someone, I have connections. I can actually get rich from nothing. I can treat life like a video game and go out there and create wealth for myself. No problem. Every single human being has that opportunity. Now, some people have a greater opportunity than others because they're born into greater circumstances, but it doesn't mean that you can't. You just have to deal the hand that you were dealt. Play the cards that you were dealt. That's it. You just have a different starting point. But following these principles, anyone can get to where they truly, genuinely want to get to. Okay? So that's what I want you to take away from attention. Now, The second part we have to understand is intention, the movement along the lifeline, okay? Attention is shifting lifelines. Intention is moving along the lifelines towards the goal itself. So how do we define intention? Intention is our resolve to have and to act. What does that mean? When I make a decision and I'm resolute in it and I say, I will have this. When I'm at home, I'm hungry. Okay, I'm hungry. I will have food. I will go make myself a yogurt bowl. I will go make myself some eggs and toast. Done, I will have it. It's gonna happen. Put one foot in front of the other and act to go and make it a reality. Simple. The problem is most people's goals are a little more complex. When you say, I will have a million dollars. Well, I don't know how to get a million dollars. I don't know if it's gonna happen. When is it gonna happen? Doubts creep in. 
your attention immediately shifts to, uh oh, I don't already have it. What if I needed to be born rich? What if this doesn't work? See, your attention is shifting. Instead of focusing on, I will have it, it will happen. Don't know how, don't know when, that's okay. It will happen when the time is right. If you could stay with, see, this is why it's so subtle. Doubts are creeping in and you're not even aware of it. It's so unconscious. Your level of awareness hasn't gotten to the point where you can notice everything. And your training, we've been trained by society to always be fearful. News all around us is teaching us to be fearful. People around us are speaking in fearful tones. Oh, the times, oh, the times are bad. Inflation and everyone's in debt. All oh, the prices are rising. You listen to these and it becomes a part of your identity. So you start to repeat it again and again and again. And you tell yourself the story. Oh, now's a bad time to start a business. Oh, I won't be a millionaire because of X, Y, and Z happening over there. Oh, this business will never work anyways. What's the point even trying? These are the stories that we tell ourselves. What you have to understand though, is that we have two types of intents. We're either moving towards, AKA moving along lifeline, or moving away from intents. There's moving towards intents and moving away from intents. So for most people, if we go to, let's say marriage, and we talk about someone having a fight or a relationship, someone, two people are fighting and one of the partners, you know, the, let's say the wife or the husband, whatever it may be, they say, well, I am in a huge fight with my partner right now. I would like to get them back. I don't want to lose them. Attention is on the negative. They act from that place. Oh no, do something quickly, do something so I don't lose them. Quickly, send them a text. This action comes from a place of desperation. It comes from an attention of desperation of neediness. So they send a desperate text out and then the partner immediately gets even more turned off. Like, oh, just leave me alone. The more you try to chase, the more the partner gets turned off. Same thing with sales, right? Like the more you need the sale, you come from a place of neediness and you act from that place of neediness. I must have it, but deep down you're saying, I don't already have it. I'm scarce, I'm empty. You know, I don't, I don't have anything. I'm barren, it's taken away from me. You're in resistance. So you act from the place of desperation, of neediness, you perpetuate it even more. So now you focus on what you don't want and you're moving towards it unconsciously. You're moving along the lifelines. The train is moving towards the thing that you don't want. It's preposterous, but that's what's happening and you're not even aware of it. So the reason you keep experiencing something that you don't want, you're stuck in your business, you're stuck at a job you hate, stuck at a certain revenue level, or you're stuck in a marriage that you hate, or you keep attracting the same relationships over and over again, this is why. You may say you want it consciously, but your behaviors, your unconscious behaviors, it has been trained to always be ungrateful, always focus on what's not there, look at the glass as half empty, and naturally the actions that are popping out of that place you're not even aware of. You keep doing things to sabotage yourself. It's not rocket science. That's just how you've been trained. That's formed a part of your identity. So as a human being, your state of consciousness, your vibration, your predominant vibratory state is of that. And therefore, you are attracting the life that you're experiencing right now. If you are experiencing a life that you don't want, it is because predominantly you have been emitting, transmitting the vibration of the life that you have. It's as simple. If you were emitting a different vibration, you'd be experiencing a different life. So what's the key to intention? The key to mastering intention is to have congruence with attention. What do I mean by that? So you can see that most of the problems get solved when we have correct attention, but we also have to be mindful of the action that we're taking. So this is what I advise my clients. Before you act, ask who. Who is the version of me that's showing up? And that's the secret. Focus first on who and then on what you're doing. Which version of me is showing up as I'm making this marketing funnel or I'm making this marketing video or I'm doing team meetings? Which version of Quasi is showing up? Is it the version that's needy, desperate, guys, we haven't gotten a sale, what's going on? Like, we need the sale. Or is it, this is just part of the journey. It happens, but I feel great. I'm so grateful for what, I, for what I already have. My attention is on what I have and what I want. It would be amazing if we, when we, end this month and hit all of our projections. We crush it. Coming from that place of who, and then doing the how. So begin with who, who is showing up, and then act from that place. The intent has to come from a place of I'm moving towards it. I'm moving towards what I want. I'm not focused on moving away from what I don't want. It's just like weight loss. If you keep looking at the mirror and you keep saying how overweight you are, or how awful you look, then that's what you're gonna keep attracting. Oh, I'm, I'm overweight, I'm gonna go to the gym. Oh, I'm overweight, I'm gonna eat better. Why not instead focus on, I am becoming more and more 
in perfect shape, the shape that I've always wanted to be in. My health is getting better and better. Look at the progress you're making. Be grateful for it. Ah, I am making progress. Everything is going so perfectly well. I'm gonna keep eating healthy and keep exercising because I feel so great and I feel so healthy and I'm, it's working, I'm becoming better. In my life, when I've wanted to make progress in the gym, what's worked is that. Not when I look at myself and belittle myself and feel horrible about myself and my attention is on the negative because then my thought, feeling, vibrations manifest that particular sector of reality. So this is very, very crucial stuff. I want you to apply these two keys because if you start doing this for a few months, a few years, you won't be able to recognize where you are. So here's one of my clients, Sukhdev, who achieved some massive results recently out of working with us. He achieved 320K in sales last month for one of his clients, and he says that's the result of being unattached. Thanks to week four and Quasi for your help in answering my questions on how to be unattached. When you become unattached, you get out of your own way, you remove the negative vibrations of fear and anxiety and the things that you don't want, so that the things you do want you're no longer moving away from your intent, you're moving towards it. And that's exactly what he was able to do. So if you would like to get results like Sukhdev, you wanna work closer together with me and take these teachings deeper, I invite you to click on the link below in the description to apply to see if it would be a good fit. We typically work with two types of clients. Number one, the aspiring entrepreneur. So you're an aspiring entrepreneur, you typically have a corporate job right now and you wanna quit because you work really long hours and you don't get to spend enough time with family, you don't get to do what you want, you just feel burnt out. But what you see is no matter how much you try tactics and strategies, business plans, business methods, it's not really a business or a tactical or a skill problem. You have all of the skills. It's really an internal issue, more like a self-doubt, a lack of confidence. You are stuck in the identity of, an, of a corporate employee or a nine to five employee. You haven't shifted into the identity of an entrepreneur. We help our clients with that and we've had so many clients who've been able to successfully quit their jobs and transition. They saw it wasn't really a skills deficit, it was an internal, a mindset issue, an identity problem. Okay, and that's what we help our clients solve in our flagship Reality Mastery program. The second type of client we work with is the existing entrepreneur. So you might be uh, an online business owner, you might have a trading business, you might be a real estate agent, someone who's at work for themselves and you're responsible for your own income and you don't really have a ceiling on your income, but the problem is you're hitting an invisible ceiling with your income and you don't know why. Again, you have all the tactics and strategies, you're seeing your friends make more money than you, but for some reason, your business just keeps going down year over year, month over month, and you don't know why. You just don't know why. You try tactics and nothing works, and you, you're starting to see that it's an internal problem. You can't do the things you need to do. You feel burnt out again, and really, it's just an identity problem. You've gotten stuck and comfortable at this particular identity, and so you keep hitting, hitting the ceiling. Okay, so once we help our clients go past this, kind of like Sukhdev, then your revenue just skyrockets. So if that's something you'd want to take deeper, work to close together with me and my team, I invite you to apply by clicking on the link in the description. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how we can help. Thanks.